welcome to another exciting time in the presence of the Lord. Hope you had an amazing week. All right, it's time to gather the family together. And if you haven't done so, please share the service link to friends and family. Also, don't forget, we have age-specific content for our teens church and junior church members. You can find that at the comment section or on our YouTube page at One Church NG. So let's put away all distractions and let's focus on the service as we enter a session of prayer. And I'll be right back. God bless you. Good morning, church. Can we begin to pray as we have gathered unto him? Let's begin to appreciate God has given us the, a new week again. Let's appreciate him because he's the giver of life. Let's appreciate him because he's the king of kings. He's the lord of lords. He's the most high. Father, we are grateful unto you for giving us the privilege to see a new week. Thank you so much because we are so secured in you. He said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and his mercy endured forever. Father, thank you so much for your mercy that has endured in my life. Your mercy has kept me. Your mercy has preserved me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you for a wonderful week ahead of me. Thank you for a wonderful day ahead of me. Thank you for all your goodness over my life, your loving kindness. Thank you, Father. I am grateful in the name of Jesus. Can we begin to bless his holy name? He is worthy to be praised. He has been our strength. He has been our keeper. He's been our protector. He's been our shield. The word of God says he's a son and a shield. Indeed, he's a son and a shield unto you. He's a son and a shield unto me. He has preserved us. Father, we thank you. Our thanks cannot even be enough. We bless you, Lord, from the depth of our hearts. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. Take all the glory in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want us to still pray concerning our families. Let's begin to pray and ask God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, let your hand of protection rest upon every member of my family, that we will not mourn over any member of my family, we will not mourn over any member of our church, we will not mourn over any man, we will not mourn over any woman, Let's begin to decree the covenant of life upon everyone in the name of Jesus. The covenant of life is our right in Christ. So let's begin to decree that over every member of our family, over every member of one church, over every member of the body, let's begin to decree life in the name of Jesus that will not mourn over anyone, that we are secured in the name of Jesus. Let's decree the covenant of life. We can enforce the covenant of life in Christ Jesus. We enforce the covenant of life upon everyone. We decree that we are secured. We decree that we are protected. The word of God says, with long life I will satisfy you. Therefore, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we receive the satisfaction of long life. In our families, we receive the satisfaction of long life. We decree that every cost of our life set on the path of death is reversed. I want you to begin to reverse it. Every cost of death, every cost of my life set on the cost of death is reversed. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we reverse every cost of death. We decree life over everyone. We declare that we live long. We declare that we live well. There is no premature death among us. There is no premature death among us. Even among our children, there is no still bat. In the name of Jesus, every one of our members that are pregnant in this season that wants to give birth, they'll give birth well. They'll give birth safely. The mother will be fine. The child will be fine. The father will be fine. It will end in praise. We decree this, O oh God, because the word of God says, I shall decree a sin and it shall be established. Therefore, I am decreeing the covenant of life over everyone. I decree the covenant of life over everyone. The word of God says we have the mark of Christ, and that mark of Christ is the mark of life. That mark of Christ is the mark of protection. The word of God says I am life. Therefore, I receive that life of Christ, that life of Christ that overshadows every, every, every form of death. That is the life I live. Therefore, the enemy cannot tell me that I do not have the life of Christ. I walk in the life of Christ. I walk in full capacity of the life of Christ. I enjoy the life of Christ. 
I enjoy the benefit in the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. You have blessed me with all that pertinent with life and godliness. I enjoy it, oh God, in Christ Jesus. This is my portion in Christ Jesus. I overcome every form of death in this season. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we appreciate you because you have given us this as a gift. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray for divine protection, for divine provision for our families, divine provision for our household, divine provision for the body of Christ. Let's begin to decree in the name of Jesus. The word of God says in Psalm, He says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Let's begin to decree in the name of Jesus, our needs are met in this season. Every member of our family will not go hungry. No member of our church goes hungry. In the name of Jesus, the body of Christ is provided for. In the name of Jesus, I pray in this season you know God that our needs are met even if the children of Israel can be provided for in the wilderness this season we are provided for in the name of Jesus no lack around us no lack around us we banish every spirit of lack we banish every spirit of not enough we have more than enough we walk in divine abundance in the name of Jesus all around us we see abundance all around us we hear abundance the heaven is opened over us. The heaven is opened over us. There is a release of God's blessing over us. In the name of Jesus, our bands are filled. Our bands are filled. Our bands are filled. We decree God's abundance. God's abundance. God's abundance. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name, Father. Thank you for divine provision. Thank you for divine provision. Thank you for divine provision. We decree it in the name of Jesus. And we receive it with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. I want us to pray for our children. The Bible says, Children are the heritage of the Lord. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. God has blessed us with wonderful children. I want you to join me in faith and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, that in this season, that our children do not go to school. Rather, they are homeschooled. Let's begin to decree that they are ten times better. Let's begin to decree the spirit of excellence upon them. That their understanding opens up. In the name of Jesus, that their ability to assimilate is increased on all sides. In the name of Jesus, let's begin to pray for our children. Decree the hand of God upon them. Decree the hand of God upon them. Decree that the Spirit of God broods over them. The Spirit of God broods over their mind. That they, as they study, they understand. They become better. He said, the, the Word of God said, an excellent spirit was found upon Daniel. Let's begin to pray. Excellent spirit upon our children. That when the school resumes, it will be that our children will be exempted. It will be that our children will be separated. They will say, where have these children been? Let's begin to decree that these ones will be best. Our children will be best. They will be ten times better. They will operate in flying colors. And when the exams are set, they will do well in their exams. In the name of you, let's begin to decree peace over our children that they will not fall sick. They are exempted from every form of sickness. They are exempted from every form of bacteria. They are exempted from every form of virus attacks. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus upon them. We plead the blood of Jesus upon them. The Spirit of God rests on them. The wisdom of God rests on them. The goodness of God rests on them. The peace of God rests on them. In the name of Jesus, the children that God has given us are for signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus, let's begin to decree divine strength upon our children. In the name of Jesus, let's begin to also decree that they are immune. That their immune system is boosted up. Their immune system is boosted. They will not be a source of concern to us, the parents. They are preserved. They are protected. They are promoted. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray for the church. The church is undergoing a phase. And if God, if God be God, the church will come out well and strong in this season. So let's begin to decree that the church of God is strong at this time. That the spirit of God energizes all the body of Christ. That the spirit of God preserves the body of Christ. That the children of God are kept in this season. That none of them will fall by the wayside. That none of them will be weak. That none of them will be weak. That none of them will go lukewarm. That none of us will go cold. 
in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray for divine strength. Divine strength upon the church. Divine strength upon the church. Divine strength upon the church in the name of Jesus. Let's decree God's divine strength upon the church. God's divine strength that the gate of hell will not prevail against the church. That the plot of the enemy, the intention of the enemy concerning the church fails in the name of Jesus. The, 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 the plan of the enemy concerning the church fails in the name of just every arrow targeted against the body of Christ is reverted back to the enemy in the name of Jesus let's begin to decree that love love prevails in the church unity prevails in the church oneness prevails in the church that the body of Christ is, is, is alive again the body of Christ is alive the body of Christ is revived revived to full capacity in the name of Jesus let's begin to pray let somebody begin to pray the body of Christ will not grow weak. The body of Christ will not be lukewarm in the name of Jesus. That the Spirit of God prevails in the body of Christ. The Spirit of God prevails. The Spirit of God prevails. We are energized. We are energized that at this time, the Word of God is enlarged in our heart. The Word of God is enlarged in our heart. The Word of God becomes a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. In the name of Jesus, that fresh oil is released upon the church. That the gate of hell do not prevail against the church. Thank you, Lord. Father, we give you all the glory. Thank you for answered prayers. Blessed be your holy name forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome back. I'm sure that was a blessing. I pray all our prayers overflows into great testimonies in Jesus' name. Also, we're going into a worship session, right after which our lead pastor here at One Church, Pastor Tunde Usidame, will share the word. I know that will be a blessing to you. So, I'll leave you now as we immerse ourselves in an awesome time of worship. And I'll be right back. God bless.
whenever we call you, you answer. Whenever we call you, you come to us, you come to our rescue. We thank you, Jesus. Your love is amazing. We bless your name. Just take a moment this morning and just appreciate him and sing a new song to him. Father, we bless you.
Praise God and welcome to another Sunday service. This happens to be the last one uh, in the month of June. You know, I do hope that the month has been kind to you uh, and that you have, you know, started to, you know, pick up. You know, business has started. You started to reach out to contacts. You know, things are happening. Amen. Because that's what we're all praying for and that as the uh you know the city begins to open up more that you find favor before men and indeed find favor before god in the name of jesus like i always say please ensure to send out the links for today's service to friends to family and in fact to enemies your enemies will become your friends trust me after this amen so please send out to them uh wherever you can watch this from wherever so please send out to them let's make a habit you know of putting it on our status and all of these things and just celebrating what god is doing with us here at one church i want to say uh, a big god bless also to everyone you know who goes out of their way and stretches themselves to ensure that we uh, we do our best with our online services so far. I want you to just please help me, everyone listening. Let's applaud everyone. Throw in a hand clap in the comments section. I pray God's blessing upon you all, everyone in the media team. Ladi, uh, Bobby, Dr. Lumide, Richie, Etso, you know, and all of these lovely people. God bless you to jones you know uh everyone the sound guys shegun the instrumentalists uh uh one sound Tokwe and the team uh banke uh funke thelma all of you guys uh agnes god bless you so much uh i pray you know that this 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 strength and uh that we have found uh how we've been able to innovate even in this season will stand us in good stead for a new move of God that I believe is coming into the church. God bless you so much uh, and thank you. I'll also say a word about our uh, uh, brand new website um, that should be coming up anytime now. Amen. Now, brand new. It's, it's nothing like the old one. Has loads of bells and whistles, you know. So say so much more about one church. You can also have a full online church experience uh, on there. And I'll say much more about that um, as time goes on. I'm really excited about what is ahead of us. And I'm sure that if you've been listening to the message or messages this month, uh, you will be equally excited. Uh, Pastor Sam Adeyemi blessed us at the start of the month, June 7. I'm sure you can remember that. And then we've done the 14th, the 21st. Uh, today also is going to be by way of recap. But I want us to do something. I want you to listen over and over to the messages uh, uh, we've, we've, that have come forth this month because they will be a huge blessing to you. And I mean that they are strategic, they are prophetic, they are instructive, you know, they are really for this season. And I want you to take time to, I mean, go back to YouTube, Facebook, and listen again and again and again and again and again. Again and again and again and again and again. Because I believe that we will all hit the ground running in the name of Jesus. Those messages are loaded. They are, they are packed with instruction. Amen. Packed with instruction. So please take time out to do that. It is very, very important. We want to round up that series uh, today. We've been talking about the blessing, uh, emerging stronger. And, and you know, the, the month largely has centered around Elijah's experience by the brook in 1 Kings um, and chapter 17. In 1 Kings and chapter 17, uh, his life has centered, uh, sorry, the, the, the series has centered around his life at the brook. I want to open up our eyes to something very quickly. If you'll open to 1 Kings chapter 18, 1 Kings and chapter, sorry, 1 Kings and chapter 18. 
1 Kings and chapter 18. Amen. If you go to, um, forgive me, if you go to verse... <clears throat> it's quite a long chapter. If you go to verse... Yes, if you go to verse 41. Forgive me. Verse 41. Verse 41. It says, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. And by way of context, I want to uh, you know, just fill us in for those who haven't been a part of the series so far. Uh, in uh, 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 First Kings 17, you know, God speaks to Elijah or God speaks through Elijah that a drought was coming upon the land. And immediately God instructs Elijah uh, about where he would find nourishment in that season. Uh, the lesson there, like I said, is that your obedience is the key to your provision. God has provided, and that provision has been delivered. Amen. Express delivery to the place that God has sent you to. If you find your place of calling, if you find your place of assignment, if you find your place of vision, you have found your place of provision. One of the worst things, like someone said, to experience is to have eyes but have no vision. I've said that no walking around and living with no vision is in and it's of itself a pandemic. It's a pandemic. <laughs> yeah? Because someone may be, it may be blaming the pandemic. We've been on lockdown, you know. Things are not happening because we we're on lockdown. I really hope that you are coming out of this season with a vision from God, fired up to conquer the next um, six months. And so God says to him to go, you know, to this brook uh, and that the ravens would feed him uh, and he would drink from the brook. And he experienced supernatural provision. He, it was five star, amen. It was, you know, the, Kem the Kempinskis and the Marriott's. It was top notch. You could compare it to a you know, five-star hotel uh, of our days, the Hyatts and all of those. I mean, how, could, it, could it get any better? Is there any better room service? <laughs> the ravens, the most, you know, one of the most miserly of birds, flying in your meals <laughs> on demand. <laughs> Even when you don't need, flying them in, drinking by the brook. And that explains a level in God. But at some point, the Holy Spirit taps you on the shoulders and says there are bigger assignments to do. And so he tells him when the brook dries up to get up and go. If you're listening to me, the brook dried up because there's a new season for you. The brook dries up because there's a new assignment for you. The brook dries up because God might be calling you into a place of maturity. And he sends him to this woman. And God says, I've instructed this woman to be a blessing to you. And he must have gone, you know, coasting and looking for, uh, uh, you know, the next five-star five star service. And he meets a woman who is in need. He meets a woman who is, you know, gathering sticks, wants to uh, bake her last loaf of bread so that her and her son can die. That was a reflection of the depth of poverty that was existing and how bad the drought was. And it may have been confusing for the prophet because he didn't come, he didn't, uh, you know, he didn't expect to come into this place where he would have to solve someone's problems. The anointing in you is a problem solving anointing. It is a problem solving anointing. In Isaiah 10, let, let's, let's go there. In Isaiah chapter 10, let me use my Bible here. In Isaiah chapter 10 and verse uh, 27. Isaiah 10 and verse 27. Yes. 
Isaiah 10 and verse 27, it says, It shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. Because of the anointing oil. And the essence there of the text is that the anointing lifts burdens, amen, and breaks yokes, lifts burdens. It takes away burdens and it destroys yokes. It says the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. And so if you are anointed, and I hope you are, expect to break yokes and expect to lift burdens. It means that burdens will come. It means that yokes will come. But because you are anointed, because the Spirit of God is in you, you have more than enough to deal with the burdens and the yokes. The problem many of us believers have is that we want the anointing, but we don't want any burdens or any yokes. The anointing is purpose built for breaking yokes and lifting burdens. It is purpose built for breaking yokes and lifting burdens. And so if you are anointed and there is any aspiration in you to do more in God and be more in God, expect to deal with more. Expect to solve people's problems. He had uh, gone past you know, the, 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 the raving season of his life. He had gone past uh, the you know, drinking by the brook season of his life. And God said, you've received enough. Now it's time to give. Now it's time to give a message of hope. Now it's time to be a blessing to this family. Now it's time to counsel. Now it's time to help. Now it's time to do good. Acts 10, 38, it says, how God anointed. That's that word again. Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all them that were oppressed of the devil. Why? Because God was with him. <laughs> because he was anointed. When you are anointed, expect a demand on that anointing. And so God calls Elijah into a new season in his life where a demand is placed on his anointing and this woman experiences the miracle of multiplication where the little that she had did not run out. God's word was on it. He says, your bowl of meal will not fail. Your cruise of oil will not run out. As you pour the oil, it will keep running. As you pour the meal or the flour, it will keep running. I'm praying for someone today. As you pour the oil, it will keep running. Because you are anointed, as you pour the meal, it will keep running. To the glory of God, it will keep running in the name, in the mighty name of Jesus. So I asked us to go to um, 1 Kings 18 because I want to show us another angle to this in verse um, 40. Forgive me. In verse 41. Verse 41. And this is after Elijah has just experienced a victory. Amen. Uh, with the prophets of Baal. Or against the prophets of Baal. Uh, Elijah said unto Ahab in verse 41. Get thee up. Eat and drink. For there is a sound of abundance of rain. In other words, we are entering again into a new season. This series of messages is really about seasons. It's really about, you know, when the brook dries up, it's really about when God calls you to be a blessing to the woman in Zarephath, it's really about when rain or the rainy season is about to come again. And very interestingly, we are jumping right into the deep end of the rainy season. Amen. And I pray that as it rains, Physically, as the heavens pour over our environment, over the crops, over the farms, that you experience that same rain in your spiritual life and in your walk with God, that you experience rain in your finances in the name of Jesus. I thought someone would say a big amen. Let me see your amens in the comment section. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
bless God. Get thee up, eat and drink, Ahab, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and drink. I would have thought that Elijah would go up to eat and drink. But I find otherwise in verse 42. Instead of going up to eat and drink, Elijah went up to the top of Carmel and cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. In other words, Elijah assumed a prayer position. This is very key, very instructive. Elijah assumed a prayer position. Elijah assumed a prayer position. I want you to note that some action seems to go with some seasons. Some action seems to go with some seasons. In the first season by the brook, by the, uh, 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 you know, when he was fed by the ravens, God prophesied through him. The man of God went to the king and prophesied. And as soon as, as he acted on God's instruction, he was relocated. In the next season, he goes to this woman and she's in need, and he meets her need by the, help of, by the help of God. And he was entering into a new season. Now he's entering into another season. It is called a rainy season. And when the king went to eat and drink, he assumed a prayer position. My brothers and my sisters, everyone listening, under the sound of my voice this morning. It is very important that you and I, as we go into the rest of the year, take the same position that Elijah took, a prayer position, and said to his servant, go up now, look towards the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again, seven times. <laughs> not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, not five times, seven times. A lot of us give up after the first time. God, I haven't seen anything yet. I assumed a prayer position. What is going on? He said to him, go again, seven times. And seven times his servant went. This guy would go and come back and go and come back and say, look, I haven't seen anything. I can't find anything. As we go into the next six months, you cannot afford to give up. As we go into the next six months, you cannot afford to curse the seeds that you have sown with the words of your mouth. As we go into the next six months, you cannot afford to reverse your confessions. You have invested too much. You have put too much into the earth. Go seven times. He said, there is nothing. It came to pass the seventh time that he said, behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea. It is like a man's hand. And he said, go say to Ahab, prepare your chariot, get down, that the rain stop thee not. It came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Verse 46, and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins, and he ran before Ahab, to the entrance of Jezreel. Amen. I want to say a prayer very quickly. At the end of this year, you will be where no one expected. At the end of this year, you would have run faster than no one imagined. At the end of this year, you would have produced more results in six months than you would have produced in two years. At the end of this year, you will realize that somehow, supernaturally, 
time was collapsed in your favor. At the end of this year, you will realize that God was actually working before, during the lockdown, after the lockdown, when it looked like it was a dry season. When the servant went and came back and said there was nothing and kept going and coming back and said there was nothing. But because you kept your face between your knees, because you stayed in your prayer position as you went into a new season, God orchestrated a, 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 a life. You know, there was a conspiracy. Things just worked in your favor and you realized that you outran the chariot of the king. You outran the institutions. You outran the establishment. You outran the established businesses. You outran those that had more funds than you did. Why? Because you stayed in God's presence. You stayed in God's presence. You stayed in God's presence. Key to a new season is that you, 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 you keep your joy. Don't lose it key to a new season is that you take risks. I said this last week. Peter was used to water. Water was his environment. He had fished from that same water. He had sailed on that same water. He, however, had never walked on that water. And God will call you into a deeper place. God will call you into a next level. God will say, look, there are bigger things you need to do so you will take bigger steps. And I pray that your heart is sensitive enough to hear what God is saying for your new season. As you keep your face between your knees, you will receive instruction in the name of Jesus. As you keep your face between your knees, you will receive direction in the name of Jesus. As you keep your face between your knees, you will receive a reassurance in the name of Jesus. As you keep your face between your knees, you will receive connections in the name of Jesus. God will bring the teacher. God will bring the resource. God will bring the mentor. God will bring the funds. Everything that is required to usher you into your new place, into your next level, we receive them under heaven in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. God's hand was on him. He girded his loins. He outran the chariot of the king. May God give us the sensitivity to realize and spot a new season. I want to charge you to commit the next six months to seeking God's presence. To commit the next six months to seeking his face. To commit the next six months to keeping your face between your knees. I've said earlier and I'm saying again that there is more this year. And that this year is very strategic in the plan of God for us. It is in fact a foundation for the next decade. Keep your face between your knees. Recognize that there are opportunities in every season. And start to look for those opportunities. Recognize that there are opportunities in every season. And start to look for those opportunities. Recognize that there are opportunities in every season. And start to look for those opportunities. Opportunities. It's the former American president, John F. Kennedy, who said, and I quote, he said, the Chinese used two brushes or used two brush strokes to write the word crisis. One brush stroke stands for danger when isolated. The other brush stroke stands for opportunity when isolated. When the two words come together, it forms the word crisis. In a crisis, beware of the danger, but also recognize the opportunities. They come together. Opportunity comes in the cloak of crisis. Opportunity comes in the cloak of despair. They come together. Opportunity comes in the cloak of crisis. One of the key benefits of a crisis 
is the way it forces us to be creative and to be innovative. Think about that. The way it forces us to be creative, the way it forces us to innovate. So it's a season where you need to be creative. It's a season where you need to do new things. It's a season where you need to position yourself. See us that way, man, the Bible says, who is diligent in all his ways. He will stand before kings and not ordinary men. I like saying, however, that that man must be seen. What are you doing about positioning yourself? What are you doing about positioning your business? If this season has taught us anything, it is that the internet is here to stay. It is that online is here to stay. Yes, we have heard it before. We have played with it, played around it, toyed with things around it. But this has brought it home. <laughs> if you are not online, you are not on. <laughs> Let me put it that way. <laughs> so what is, what, is, what is, how is that going to redefine what you do? Very, very important. How is that going to redefine what you do? So please, 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 please position yourself. Get in the right position. For Elijah, it was the prayer position. He put his face between his knees. And I believe God is calling us to that more in this season. Calling us to that more in this season. As you go into the new month, what is the mind of God concerning you? As we go into the new month, what scripture are you holding on to? As we go into the new month, what are you praying about? As we go into the new month, what are you and God dealing with in the place of your maturity? It was my pastor who said many years ago, over 25 years ago, now I never forgot that statement. He said, maturity is knowing what God is dealing with you about per time. Maturity is knowing what God is dealing with you about per time. I'll say it again. Maturity is knowing what God is dealing with you about per time. I want to commit you into God's hands as we leave this month of June, as we come together next Sunday to give God thanks and to bless him for a new month. It must be for us a season where we have taken stock, where we know the next move, when we know the next word, when we know the next instruction, the next action, when we go straight in, like I keep saying, hit the ground running, get to work. And I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that you find your new space, that you find your new place, that you find your new platform, that you find your new voice, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I just want to pray for everyone listening this, mor this morning. We come together, O oh Lord, in unity of faith. We come, Lord, into the place of prayer concerning the next six months. Father, you gave us words. You gave us dreams and visions. We have faith enough to believe that the time ahead is even too much. You are a miracle working God. You turn things around overnight. And so, Lord, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that you bring them into a new season in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that you grant them supernatural speed in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that they encounter divine favor and supernatural provision in the name of Jesus. That indeed, O oh God, when the brook dried up, we found a new place. We found a new stream. We found a new flow. Let that be someone's testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. We bless your holy name. We pray in Jesus' mighty name. 
and everyone said a big amen hallelujah amen <laughs> glory to god i hope you've been blessed by that amen i hope you've been blessed by that please take time out to listen to the series of messages very important listen to the series of messages it will be a huge blessing to you and it will carry you far in the new season that we are going into i want to pray for my brothers and sisters who may not know jesus and you're listening to me today i am here because jesus helped me a lot of people are listening here today because jesus has been very instrumental in who and where they are today i want to invite you into this sweet relationship with god uh, it will mark a turning point for you it is the missing link i say that boldly and everything i said today will not apply until you have that relationship please come into a relationship with him i want you to join me let's say this word of prayer together please put your right hand on your chest and say lord jesus i come to you today and i say thank you thank you lord for dying on the cross for me Thank you, Lord, for shedding your blood for me. I believe, Lord, that that death opened up a pathway to a new relationship with God. Father, I come to accept that relationship today. I ask that you come into my heart. I ask that you make me new. I ask that you cleanse me from sin. Father, I say thank you. Because I'm born again, thank you. Because I have the Holy Spirit at work in me thank you because i have a relationship with you that is alive i give you praise i pray in jesus name and everyone said a big amen welcome god bless you welcome to this family of christ it's a family of love god always works in our favor if you just gave your life to christ please look on the screen you should see a qr code you should also see a link even in the comment section please click on it we want to hear from you we want to bless you on this journey we want to uh, give you some advice also please find a bible believing church and be a part of that family you can also join us here at one church our details are being displayed on the screen god bless you and thank you amen i want to welcome our friends also who might be worshiping with us for the very first time amen even if you've been watching previously and you've never indicated uh, at any point that you were a guest please please leave your details in the comment section we want to love on you and just say thank you for joining us today we want to hoop we want to give you a high five <laughs> amen so please just indicate we love you we say thank you for joining us uh, we look forward to seeing you again at our services. Like I said, our details are on the screen. Uh, we meet 9 a.m. on Sundays. We also meet 6.30 p.m. on Wednesdays. Please join us. Uh, on the screen, you see a QR code and a link, even in the comment section also. Please click on that um, and, uh, you know, uh, fill out the little form that it leads you to. We would love, love, love to, uh, uh, to be part of your life. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you always. Amen. All right, before we close, we want to uh, give to God like it's our custom. We do it because we love God. We do it because we uh, want to establish his work on the earth. We do it in obedience, not in fear. On the screen, you should see uh, different ways by which we give here at One Church. And I want to say a big thank you because indeed your giving has been a blessing to many families, especially in this lockdown period, and has been a blessing to extending God's work uh, uh, even here at One Church. We say thank you. I pray it rebounds unto you for a testimony in Jesus' name. So please let's give of our offerings, of our tithes, of our special giving of any sort as we give today. Father, we say a big thank you. We don't take this for granted, O oh God. We ask that as we give, O oh God, that it rise to you like an offering that smells sweet, that it goes into our heavenly account, that it counts for us. Lord, you gave to us when we could offer nothing. And so what we give, Lord, really is nothing compared to what we gave. 
it is only a sign of appreciation for what you gave. We say thank you. Receive it, O oh God. We give it with thanks. We pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said a big amen. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of service uh, today. Uh, like I've been saying the last few weeks, please download the confessions. You should see the link on the screen as I speak. I want us to use it more and more and more as we go into the month. It is meant to be a part of our everyday, <clears throat> everyday lives. We want to close by taking our closing charge, which uh, we use here at One Church. It is taken from Proverbs chapter 4, verses 18 and then 20 to 23. Next Sunday will be our Thanksgiving su Sunday because it is the first Sunday um, of the month. Uh, also join us as we pray and fast in the course of the week. The details also uh, you should see presently. Amen. So let's take our closing chart from Proverbs 4, 18 and then 20 to 23. One, two, let's go. It says, my path is as the shining light, shining ever brighter onto the perfect day. This week, I pay attention to God's words. I incline my ears to his sayings. His words don't depart from my eyes. I keep them in my heart. For his words are life to me and health to my body. This week, I guard my heart with all diligence for everything I do flows from it. God bless you till I see you on Wednesday have a blast. God bless. Wow, wasn't that a real blessing? Okay, be sure to leave us a greeting or share some love in the comment section to let us know how it went for you. Thank you all for being part of our service today. We know that we love you. And if you are worshiping with us for the very first time, we love you and we hope to hear from you soon. If you've missed out any of the information today, you can visit our chat room or you can check the comment section below and you see appropriate links. Also, you can find our details there if you need someone to pray with you or just talk to you. Our services will remain on those links and you can go back over and over to watch. And please don't forget to share the links with friends and family. Remember to subscribe. Till I see you again, have a great week ahead and God bless you. <laughs>